Hello there. Welcome to sunny Southern Oregon. We're in the shop today, working on uh, you know my my new giant hunk of American iron. So uh, last video, I just gotten my new to me 1969 Burke Millwright MVN milling machine, and I was you know under the uh, Trying to figure out how to get it in here and get it all hooked up and all that. And well, all of that's been done by now. It is here. It is in the shop. This is where it's going to sit and stay. Still need to do a little bit of adjusting. I need to get some leveling legs and level it out. But other than that, it's that's where it's going to be. That's its home. <laughs> Might move it forward or yeah, yeah. I think I'll bring it this way just a little bit more. But yeah, it's mostly taken care of. And for the most part, it's up and operational. I've got a, a VFD, I built a control box. I'll show you all that stuff after, after at the end of day, day's project. So on my control box, I've actually got a gauge that'll tell me the RPM of the spindle. And in order to get that to work, it requires having a magnet uh, to act as a sensor for the Hall effect. And that'll go to a little brain box, and then it outputs it on an LED display that gives me my RPM. Since I'm running off of a VFD, because it is a three-phase machine, I can't, you know, I, I can vary the frequency, hence the whole variable frequency drive, that's what VFD stands for, but I can vary that to determine what speed I'm operating at. And uh, as of such, I'm not stuck at the, the static speeds because it's got a step pulley. Actually, I've got the, got the pulley right here because I got it all cleaned up and prettied. And I'm getting ready to, to uh, do this install. So since I've moved it in here, I've got it wired. I ended up going with the armored cable on the outside of the walls. And that goes to the VFD, all that supposed to mount right here but I needed to move the motor back and the motor was really close to the VFD lock so I had to move all that so that I could actually get the pulley off which that was fun it was this thing was like held on here tight probably hasn't been taken off in 50 60 years here's the sensor so this guy right here I'm gonna put on a bracket right here so it sits there pointing up like that at the bottom of the step pulley and then the magnet will get sunk into this piece and I got some epoxy some quick epoxy to to hold that in there and then I'll be able to uh, see what my speeds are uh, so yeah let's get started on this project shall we we're gonna make a bracket to put this in Mm -mm. We'll put the bracket right here. It can bolt to the underside of this piece. Mm -mm. Alright, so let's... Okay, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. So what I'm going to do is... So these guys are super awesome. If you're one of those people that cringe every time someone uses their, their calipers to like scribe onto the dicum, then uh recommend they get one of these things. It's like literally a tool designed for that use. So it's actually got a you know, it's got a tungsten scribe on one end and a little roller bearing on the other. And you can use it to just literally scribe on. like that so this little bracket doesn't need to be it's not like vitally important that it needs to be exact in any way more or less just giving myself some some rough guidelines to work with so I got this with the the mill and I've been using it quite a bit it is working great For you know, cutting aluminum. So what I've been using it for. Oh. 
Alright, which side was the keep side? This side's the keep side, this side's the... Yeah, it cuts beautifully. I had to figure out what size blade it took and then buy a new blade for it but, and, and get it all cleaned up. But yeah, after all that, it's a wonderful machine. All right, that's not exactly the flattest spot, is it? Clean up any possible burrs on there. It's a little, a little better. Okay, so I cleaned up the metal a little bit, or the sharp edges and whatnot. So this follows along the old time uh, maker mantra. If you can't make it perfect, make it adjustable. So, here we go. We got our little bracket made with our a little adjuster. We got a couple of tooth block washers. We're gonna throw on these guys. And then, all right, so that's in place. So I saved you guys the uh, heartache of sitting here through putting it all back together. So, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> 
There's the bracket. Now we're gonna take this guy right here. We put that in. Put that there. <laughs> Forgot the belt on it. <laughs> okay, so 30 hertz. You should be putting out about uh, 11. 1,050 RPM. So yeah, that's where we stand now. We have so, in the time that I've been working on it, since it was sitting out front of the shop to being in here, so I have uh, I built this bracket to mount the control box here and the VFD here, and then put all the uh, you know the gland nuts in and all the cabling. So it's a, a twist the lock up there, and I've got a strain relief there. It goes into my uh, emergency off here, and then from there into the VFD, and then from the VFD up to the motor, and then I've got the you know the RPM gauge, and this toggle here is actually for a spindle light. <clears throat> That is a, it's a halo for like uh, HID headlights. And it actually is on magnets and it's just stuck to the bottom of the spindle there and it moves with the, with the quill. <laughs> it's amazing how much just that little light right there adds and it, it makes everything so much better too. <laughs> so this is the vise that came with the the mill, and it's it's really rough. I mean, it's not easy to move, and it looks like Swiss cheese. This thing was not at all cared for. So I got a, uh, I got a new five inch mill vise. Mm -mm. It's not a Kurt, but I don't really need a Kurt. I'm not doing Kurt level stuff here. It moves nice though. I Checked everything, indicated it in, got it trammed, and it seems to be all right. For just messing around in a garage, it'll be perfect though. So yeah, I got the, the vise. And then I've got all the collets, end mills. Got a, a Jacobs check. So we're getting there. I need to build a. St I want to. I'm going to build a storage rack right here. That's going to fit in this spot, and then all the the collets and stuff will go in there. Collets, end mills, and be situated in this space here. Yeah, something, something kind of like that to hold it all. And then I still need to get a, a 110 drop. So I've got power right there, but I don't want a daisy chain. I don't want a daisy chain power strips. So I'm gonna either, I'm gonna run another conduit up there and then just put another outlet for the 110 drop. 
or I don't know, maybe I'll get a four wire, four wire, three wire. Maybe I'll get a three wire and just run that over to a bigger junction box and then I'll have a, I'll just do two 110 circuits and the 220 circuit off of that same breaker. So I'll have a, a breakout for, for that. Kind of like a, how dryers work. So dryers have, you know, there's four pins on the plug. Two of them, across two of them is the 220 lead. And then from any one of those to the third pin is 110. Stoves work like that a lot also. That's why I like the light bulb inside the oven is a, just a regular 110 watt light bulb. That's how they do that. They send you, they send the 220 down the two legs and then they have the third leg for the neutral. And then you can just connect any one of the 220 legs to the neutral and have 110. U.S. electrical system. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of interesting, but it works. I mean, once you get to once you understand it, it's not that hard to work with. But, but yeah, either way, I need to get a uh, 110 drop for the power feed, and then also I have a three-axis DRO that needs to get installed. That'll happen pretty quick. And then I'm actually going four axis on the DRO. So I picked up uh, one of these guys. So this is gonna be a quill readout. So this will mount here somewhere-ish. That guy right there goes on the quill. And then every time you move the quill, it tells you how far you're going. It's a little easier to Look at the digital readout on this. And it's a lot more accurate to look at the digital readout on that than it is to try and, I mean, A, your little tick mark doesn't line up with your zero to begin with, but then you're like, oh. Yeah, it's, it's just, just not the best way to do that right there. So I really need to get the, a new cover made. So that might be the next, the next project not really liking having the belt and all this stuff spinning right in front of my face when I'm doing stuff. And then, you know, don't want to get my hair like caught up in the belt or anything else like that. So I've got a, uh, a sheet of stainless steel down there that I'm thinking about using to make a new cover. Because I tried finding a factory cover for this thing and it's yeah, if you can find one, they cost an arm and a leg, but yeah, most of the stuff for this thing is hard to find. So yeah, it's awesome. I love it. It's a great piece of machinery, but for some reason, there's just not enough support for it. It's, I don't know if there just wasn't enough of them made or what, but yeah, either way, what can you do? And if you have a milling machine, you can make most of the parts for your milling machine. And anything you can't make on the milling machine, well, that's what the lathe is for. Mm -mm. Yeah. Stay tuned until next time when we start getting into manufacturing the fun stuff. Now that the mill's running, we can start building the fun stuff for the mill. Which will be more fun. <laughs> so until next time, stay safe, have fun. Peace.